This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, Artie! And guess. The moment I realized the man inside was dead, I let out a scream. And to my horror, there was a black dog biting his neck! A black dog was biting the victim's neck. Yes! Blood came pouring out! And as a result, the dog's mouth became stained with it. Bah! Stop, stop! You don't need to get that detailed. At the time, was the victim... Yay! Mr. Edgeworth, why'd you ask him that? Kay, why'd you hit Uncle Ray? The man did not even flinch. He must have been dead already. But the blood continued to gush from his neck. He most likely had passed away already. His hands moved nary an inch. Yeah, Way too much detail! Are you doing this on purpose? Certainly not. I'm just trying to give an accurate testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, shall I add that statement to my testimony? If you would. It was terrifying. A truly terrifying sight. He most likely had passed away already. His hands moved nary an inch. Oh, that just cuts out the musical entirely. Hold it. Hold it. That was a very vivid testimony. That's because I witnessed it up close, relatively speaking. I could feel the anguish he suffered in his death. M Mr. Edgeworth, I won't be able to sleep tonight. Really? How terrible. Oh, come on! It's all because of your- you that my mind is filled with scary thoughts. I may even have nightmares myself. Even now I can still remember everything clearly. Man, when I watched Star Wars, the rim I might of the have snowflake insignia glimmered, but no purpose to but with no purpose but to catch my eye. Catch that eye. A ring with a snowflake insignia? Impressive memory. I was formerly a newspaper salesman. I had to quickly identify what a customer wanted based on his appearance and attitude. In order to form a successful sales strategy, it's the most basic of the basics. But you are dealing with a corpse, not a customer. Are you like that with everyone? Yes, it has already become an ingrained habit of mine. It was an important point that could determine the success or failure of a sale. He's probably doing that with us now. He's like, he literally just wants to sell us a newspaper. No, he's like <laughs> trying to make us fail, so he is doing everything in his power to stop you. That's how you were able to re easily recall such a minor detail. A snowflake Precisely. Insignia. Even with the engraved insignia, it was crystal clear. Is that really possible? What was the state of the body when we found it? I should review my evidence. It was in the hand. He couldn't have seen it through the door. I have an unerring eye. That much I can declare. So, Knightley was killed by a dog that was being kept here in the prison? I find that hard to believe. They say that pets take after their owners, yeah. It doesn't have to take after them that much! This completely defeats the purpose of animal therapy! Perhaps I should ask about the dog a little more? Know if you need to. There's a rather well known technique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright. Yeah, that, like, dude, look at this. It's not even covered. It's covered in that part. <laughs> yeah. But it's also too far away anyway for mm -hmm. him to see. A ring with a snowflake insignia. Yes, that is correct. It was clearly engraved on the surface. I see. Your testimony is very accurate. But it's a little too accurate, if you ask me. And what's wrong with being accurate? You state that you saw a ring with a snowflake insignia engraved into it. And it is true that the victim was wearing such a ring. See? Was I not correct? I That's think he might have aggravated the dog. That's not the issue I have with your testimony. Take a look at the picture. The dog lost to him in a game of chess and no. killed him. No! <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant he said he was trimming the... the, the Oh, you Frank animals, saw it? Maybe provoked Frank, the dog? So maybe Frank saw it cut, like, the dog, and then the dog, because he has the chips, walked mm -hmm. out the door, walked through the other door, and was like... It's just like... It sounded like Bowser. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the issue I have with your testimony. Take a look at this picture. As you can see, the rain, his right hand with the rain on it is covered by a sheet. It should not have been possible for you to see the engraving on the ring. Unless you had approached the body and lifted up the sheet for yourself. 
You said you only looked into the workroom through the door. And yet you gave such a detailed account of what you saw. Who do you think you are? Acting all high and mighty? I, I'm telling you, I saw what I saw. Oh, the victim must have moved his arm after I saw it. I don't think so. You said as much earlier. The man did not even flinch. He must have been dead already. The victim was already dead. How would he have been able to move his arm? This guy's looking pretty suspicious now, yeah. Frank saw it! What are you hiding, you scoundrel? Ugh, no. I ain't... I am not... That is... You're wrong. I know what I saw. There we go. Yay! Shut up already! Stop making a fuss about every little thing I say! You're just a defense attorney's assistant! Assistant! <laughs> so he has finally shown his true self. Whoa, <laughs> I guess the cat's out of the bag. A black hairy one at that. Just went flying. I'm just your friendly neighborhood witness! Are you really just a witness? I would say that you are rather suspicious. What was that?! You saw something that could not have been seen from the outside of the room. How is that possible? The logic behind it is simple. Mr. Sot, this is where you saw the body from. Um... From the window... Uh, the... the <laughs> I mean, would you have just had to have been in the room? In workroom A? Yeah. <laughs> you were on top of the mountain with the monkey! <laughs> this is where you saw the body from. He was able to see the body from a place like that? I get it, so you're saying Mr. Sot psychic, right? No, nothing of the sort. <laughs> when you discovered the body, you went inside the room where it laid. Since you saw the engraving on the ring, that is the only possibility. Heh, heh <laughs> Even if you say that, you ain't got no evidence, do ya? Where's the evidence that shows that I was in that room? I was grooming pets at the time. In the room adjacent to where the body was found. I even went so far as to borrow some rubber gloves. Show me the evidence that proves I was in the room where the body was found. How about the fact that you couldn't see the ring? You literally already proved that. And what does that prove? Hm. I guess you won't understand unless I explain it. Yeah, I don't get it at all. That evidence doesn't mean squat. Ugh! I should be careful when I bluff. Um... Okay, then what? Well, he Show left his glove evidence. behind. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. Of course, of course. Horse is a horse, of course, of course. Villebois! <laughs> Mr. Sot, what were you doing when the body was discovered? Didn't I tell you already? I was practicing being a pet groomer. I see. In that case, do you happen to recognize this glove? Oh! Th that's... This was found near the body. It is believed to have been dropped by the culprit. By the way, I noticed that you also have a rubber glove hanging out of your apron pocket. Th no! This is something else! Looks like you're missing one of your gloves. D you can find gloves like these anywhere in the prison. Your evidence proves nothing. Hmm. <laughs> Perhaps we should hand this glove over to the police for fingerprinting. I'm certain they will find some interesting results. What the? What happened? Why is it for- oh. Why did it go photo negative for a second? I, don't I thought know. the emulator was glitching out. Oh, was it? I don't think it was. I just don't know why it went photo negative. Like, why oh. they chose that as an effect. If it's- if it's like- I was it's worried like my emulator previous, was glitching. It's like from the previous game where it's like, oh no, I wonder who Damask is. So <laughs> yeah. you're like, it's supposed to distort. Yeah, it's over. Objection. <laughs> what the? <laughs> Pretty cool, right? My objection voice. <laughs> I swear that they just put that in the English patch. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Shields, could you save the jokes for later? I'm not joking. Besides, it's not over yet. There's still something else. Something that's clearly odd. <laughs> do you like my objection? <laughs> <laughs> I do, as a matter of fact. That guy's a prisoner, you know. He's got the bracelet and all. Have we used the Princess Peach take that yet? I used that in Trials and Tribulations for one of the parts. Oh, okay. 
That's right! How did he get into the other workroom? The sensor would have set off the alarm, right? He's right. That's the only thing we don't know yet. Not so fast, Mr. Prisoner. Could you fill us in? That's pretty weird. The bracelet should have been his last line of defense. Defense? That's right, Kay. It was useful evidence to Mr. Prisoner here. He could have claimed that due to the bracelet, he wasn't able to enter the room. But he didn't say a word about it. Isn't there any reason why you didn't? The silent treatment, eh? Well, the judge yesterday did say that silence is golden. Wow! You really are a hotshot defense attorney, Mr. Shields. Defense attorneys always remain calm in a pinch and smile in the face of danger. Phoenix Wright does not remain calm in a, in a pinch. pinch. He sweats Phoenix profusely. Phoenix Wright is like, help me, Mia. <laughs> Mia, help me. Phoenix, just bluff it. You can do it. Yeah! <laughs> That's what your old man taught me. The defense attorney's creed, yeah. Fake it, bluff it, Mia. They need a shirt with that. Basically. <laughs> a shirt that's like, how to be a defense attorney. Fake it, bluff Fake it. Fake it, bluff it. Ask Mia, me. help me. <laughs> yeah. So, what's the deal? Why didn't you mention anything about the bracelet? His the hair materialized <laughs> back on. The truth is, it's broken. Broken? Some time ago, I took a spill and the bracelet hit the floor with a loud bang. Ever since then, it has not been able to activate the sensor. Okay. Forgive me, it was so convenient, I didn't want to report it. So, let's try having you open the door. I see. So the bracelet was broken. But did it really break so easily? If that is true, then oh, there the is a problem with the prison's security. The dog might have broken it. You over there? May I have a moment? Here, yeah, kid kitty, yeah, you're such a cute little guy. Yes, you are. Meow. Excuse me? Y yes what can I do for you, meow? The prisoner's bracelet appears to be broken. What? Really? That's not good at all. I'll contact the person in charge and have it replaced immediately. Thank you. I'll be holding on to the broken bracelet for the time being. Saw its bracelet data jotted down in the organizer. Yes, sir. Please take care of it. Let's see if it works. Now that the bracelet's been taken care of, shall we move on to arresting you for murder? What? Perish the thought! I didn't kill anybody! But your bracelet was broken, right? Doesn't that mean you could have gone anywhere you wanted during the animal show? But all I did was find the body! Honest! And it is true that I saw the dog biting his neck! However, I entered the workroom after the dog had left. Why did you do that? Well, it's just... I was curious if he had anything of value on him. So he was planning to loot the corpse. That's why he remembers Knightley's ring so well. Why didn't you take it? Why are you looking at me, Mr. Edgeworth? I am a great thief. Please don't put me on the same level as him. But I didn't take a thing. The animal show had ended and the other prisoners were making their way back down here. I hurried back to my workroom and let out a scream to deceive the others. And that's when you dropped your rubber glove. Rubber glove data updated. Guess his story holds up. What do you think, Miles? Whether he is the murderer or not, one big question remains. How did Knightley get all the way from his holding cell to the prison? You're right about that. It's a real stumper. And there's something Mr. Salt said in his testimony that I'm very concerned about. If that dog had any part in the murder... Mr. Sot? Y y yes what is it Were there any other prisoners who didn't see the animal show? Yes, there was only one other that I know of. And this prisoner wouldn't have been able to see the show even if he wanted to, correct? Y yes, that's correct. Why do you ask? Just as I thought. I had my suspicions as soon as I saw that black dog. That fiendish criminal. I never expected him to be held in this prison. Where is his cell? Uh, do you intend to meet him? Who's in the prison? That's what I want to know. Hmm? Who's him? He's a very special man. He receives very special treatment. Oh my gosh, and... is he Gant? No, wait, he was executed. Was he executed? We don't know if he was okay, executed. Okay, okay, okay. Manfred von Karma was executed. Yeah, he was executed. <laughs> Why? I don't know. 
Oh, forgive me. I need to watch what I say about him. However, if you value your lives, I would advise you to stay away from him. Hey, cut it out already! You're giving me the creeps! Hmm, a puppet master in the shadows, huh? Yeah, I still value my life. He's being held here in the special cell. Come on, I wanna meet him! Over there, in that direction. Oh, it's in the special tag. The special tag? <laughs> so it's in that prison. The special, special cell. It certainly seems like he receives special treatment. Oh, is it, could it be Christoph Gavin? No. He's not in jail yet. He's not in jail yet. Floor plans up. Who's a big shot guy that's not executed that could be in there besides Gant? G so it could be Gant, could be Matt Ongard. I guess he's kind of big shot. It could be Godot. Nah, unless, Godot unless Godot's be in there. dead. Godot's dead. It could be Quercus Alba. <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> Who is this? Oh, it could also be no, no, no. no. <laughs> oh yeah, butt of the year. Butt of the year could be. Him. He's only been here for a few days, and he already has his own special <laughs> prison. <laughs> Wait, just who is this him anyway? To protect my own life, all I can tell you is that he's the oldest prisoner here. My deepest apologies, <laughs> but I can't see anymore. I can't say anymore. He's truly terrifying. How you like to swim, Edgeworth? <laughs> Care to fill me in? It feels like you're leaving Uncle Ray behind here. He is someone I knew in the past. Let's hear, let's head for the special cell. I believe that black dog should be there as well. Who would have guessed that the bracelet was broken? I thought the security here was supposed to be tight. When I saw all those animals roaming around freely, I knew that something was amiss. At the very least, as long as that person is here. The person that the inmate mentioned. Well, let's hurry up and head to the special cell. That black dog might be there. We should proceed with caution. They say that the pets reflect the owners. It's gonna mm -hmm. be someone who's like... Hey, Miles, about your face. Could you loosen it up a bit? Since you're going to be Uncle Ray's assistant, you'll need to smile more. <laughs> Being an assistant and smiling more have nothing to do with one another. That's not true. A smile is the first step to building trust of a client. He can do a smirk. First, show a refreshing smile to put them at ease, then give them a wink to capture their heart. <laughs> End with a hug and exchange business cards. That's how you open up a client's heart. They're behind security glass! Let's just keep that to ourselves, please. Oh I love gosh. Ray. He's, He's great. Cool. Well, managing the law firm was quite tough at first. It was difficult inheriting the business from Gregory. Is that so? What kind of requests do you usually receive at the office? Oh, could a uh, red, white, blue be there? Oh, it could be red, white, blue. Red, white, and blue. Um. Red, white, and blue. Never give up. Red, red, red America! <laughs> Usually requests to defend suspects in murder cases or various sorts of legal counsel. Well, our basic policy was, we welcome everyone. Did you ever have to turn down any requests? Well, if the client wasn't cute enough. I thought everyone was welcome! I'm kidding. That was a joke. We accept clients of all sorts. With Greg's name on the line, I couldn't do a half-hearted job. The Edgeworth Law Offices, the law firm that my father built. March 28th, 1241 p.m., prison special cell. Hey, it's pitch black in here. I can't see a thing at all. Aren't you always talking about how the Yadagarasu is able to flap even in the darkest night? Even in the depths of night, when no other bird dares to take flight? One alone soars to shine the light of the righteousness of the, on the world's blight! And that one is me, for I am the great thief Yadagarasu! Oh ho, that was pretty cool. Oh, it could be, a uh, Detective. Uh, detective Bad? I also said Detective Black. <laughs> detective not, Black! That's not his name. It could be him, because he's old. Still, I can't just see what I can't see. I'm still just a human. Me! <laughs> ah! Mr. Edgeworth, I presume. <laughs> what is this, Palpatine? That voice. It can only be. It has been far too long. So you still remember me? <laughs> it would be impossible to forget. 
because it was you who did what none could do. And place me here in this cell. Oh, was that the the person that they threw in there that um, he did the falsified evidence for? Who? I don't know who. You know how he and Lana or whatever uh, faked evidence and then... Are you talking about Joe Dark? He's dead. Is it the wet noodle? No. Um, don't tell me that the dog is talking to you, Mr. Edgeworth. Is there someone else there? I can't see anything through. Down, boy. It is rude to frighten the visitors. Here, allow me to illuminate this dark room. Ruff, woof. Oh my gosh, he is... Uh... Boss. That's funny. <laughs> boss, yeah. This is the one character that I literally couldn't do the voice that I wanted to give him. So I'm, gi so I'm giving him the Palpatine voice, basically. Okay. I always expected him to have more of like a high-pitched voice, like... <laughs> but I'm like, um, I can't do his actual voice. Besides huh. It. He kind of looks like... You know Doofenshmirtz's weird... Uh, oh, Rodney! Rodney! <laughs> he looks yes. like him without the glasses. Also, fun fact, <laughs> one Let's Player who played this was like, sure, it was going to be Manfred von Karma in here. And even after you see a song, he's like, that's Manfred von Karma! It's like, no, it's not! I'm not! He has the same weird nose and mouth. A little bit. <laughs> Such noisy visitors from the voices and footsteps. Two more in the back. Does he have a full turkey in there? But it would be rude not to introduce myself. I am called Sirhan Dogen. Okay, so it's not anybody we know. Mr. Edgeworth and I. We are old acquaintances. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa, look at his face! That's so creepy and awesome. This man is a former assassin. Oh. The blind assassin, Sirhan Dogen. His weapons are sharp knives and a ferocious dog. His appearance is always accompanied by the sound of a bell. It is said that the ringing of his bell in the darkness is the last sound his victims hear. Would you be so kind as to share the reason why you have come, Mr. Edgeworth? That will not be necessary. You are already well aware of why we're here. <laughs> it seems we know each other quite well. Aww. Dog has his people. We suspect your dog of committing the murder. The witness who discovered the body saw him biting it. There must be some mistake. My boy is obedient. To you? He would never do such a thing. Right, Anubis. Good boy, good boy, good boy. Anubis may be your guide dog, but you raised him to be a ferocious killer. Can he not see? Sir Andogan is blind. Oh my gosh, that's even better. So he's blind, but he's an assassin. Yes. And he has this, like, seeing eye dog. Yeah. That's such a cool idea! <laughs> like, I know that that's terrible, and he's an he assassin. He is a very cool character. But that's... That's seriously epic. He doesn't even know all the beauty that's around him. He's <laughs> right. got, like, a million things of gold in there. <laughs> he was one of the weapons that you used as an assassin. To begin with, is the witness of a reliable sort. Ugh. It's true that Saad is also one of the suspects. And it's difficult to say if we can trust his testimony. He's prisoners. You can't <laughs> trust prisoners. In any case, I think you have the wrong dog. Right, Anubis. Right, Aww. boy. What a cute little dog. I wonder if he knows who the witness is. Oh gosh, is. he has no pupils. No, he doesn't. <laughs> He's, very just that. He's very creepy. He's very creepy. That's cool. I'm into it. <laughs> What's present means? He can't see! <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Hmm. As the flower of death blooms, your request has been accepted. What? This doesn't have such a sinister meaning behind it. The dog. Ugh. I would like to hear your alibi from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. yesterday morning. During the animal show. <laughs> I was in my humble cell the entire time. I took up whittling recently. My focus was solely on the wood and chisel in my hands. See, here's my thing. I just want to know what's happening with, um... De Killer. De Killer. <laughs> the French version. <laughs> yeah, that one. 
The prisoners have free access to chisels here. Normally, that's not allowed. The warden is a kind soul. She has given me special permission. Kind? Ridiculous. Even five metal chisels would become deadly weapons in his hands. I started out by carving these Buddha statues, but I moved on to other shapes after the 674th. <laughs> really? That many? All it takes is time, which I have so, plenty of. Here is what I'm working I'm on now. I'm looking at the chess table, because this is going to be probably very important. Um, also, he has cookies. Like, that's dope. Um, <laughs> I make so, the best cookies in so the galaxy. the white king <laughs> is literally in the middle, and all the other pieces are cornered. With, I think, a rook on Rooks the are the side? castles. The rooks are the castles? Yeah, so I think there's a rook, either that or a, a knight turned sideways, uh, trying to attack the pawns. Interesting. That's probably symbolic. There it is. I did not know that you played chess. Okay, so... Do you play as well, Mr. Edgeworth? I would like to test your wits in a game sometime. <laughs> so, how, <laughs> how it's set up right now, I'm pretty sure... So the kings are in the back. The kings are in the back. However, there's a rook there, and he will be able to take out those pieces, which means that king will be checkmated in, like, three turns, I think. No, because if you move the rook towards the king, then the massive knight that he has will be able to take the rook. Okay. I only started playing since my arrival here. No, the the knight. So I am still in the horse. What's the horse? Is that also the, the horse? Is the knight? Yeah, the knight is gone from the white team. Right, but he, Dogen, who's playing as black, presumably has the black knight still. Yes, but what I'm saying is his rook over there. Yeah. Can take out the king pretty soon, because he has it set up. Correctly. No, because if he moves it towards the king, then the white rook will be able to take that rook. Mmm. Okay. Hmm. What is this piece? It's a free-headed dog. Ooh. Cerberus? Just for the fun of it, I carved this hound piece. Chess is a game of war. Pawns, knights, and castles. Each side pushing their forces to the limits to take the life of the enemy's king. However, I found the absence of dogs to be strange. Hounds are an indispensable part of warfare. But it is nothing more than folly. I still play all the normal rules of chess. What I've been trying to figure out is, he got this dog before he went into prison. And, and he was allowed to take the dog into prison somehow. I don't know. That's but, stupid for so many reasons. Yeah, it is. Maybe the warden's not all with it. <laughs> the warden's definitely not all with it. She's She was kissing the guy earlier. Isn't it difficult for you to find opponents here in prison? I always play correspondence chess. Correspondence chess? So you play chess for the mail. Prisoners are allowed to send and receive letters, although they are subject to inspection. At the moment, I am waiting for my opponent's next move. Hound piece data jotted down. Oh. John Arbuckle! Chess by mail! <laughs> He's playing chess with Horace Knightley. <laughs> I is. can't believe he took my dog. I'm going to kill him. No, Anubis, he... kill him. <laughs> no, seriously, he must have because uh, the guy that sounds like the the guardian of the park gave him oh we the, don't know how old the he chess is. board because mm -hmm. he was like oh yo I really need my chess board because probably this guy was like Mash. want to play chess <laughs> <laughs> um and then maybe I don't know how that would get him out of prison but that might be something going on. Hmm. So he plays chess with people outside of this prison. Do you know who was murdered? It was Horace Knightley, a most unfortunate lad. Your ears are as sharp as ever. They are all I can rely on. Yeah, that's true. As I thought, he has full knowledge of everything that goes on in this prison. And sent. On second thought, he might be fortunate after all. Fortunate? How so? He committed a grave crime, but he was able to avoid punishment for it. An assassination attempt on the president. What a bold man. Assass assassination attempt. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, didn't Mr. Knightley just... He may have killed his own superior, but he never attempted to take the president's life. 
Are they trying to conceal the fact that the assassination was staged by the president? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold your horses. Knightley didn't attack the president. But Uncle Ray was requested to defend him in court on charges of attempted assassination. You didn't know either, Uncle Ray? So, they're trying to pin the whole thing on Mr. Knightley. Now I see why PIC is taking action. Ah, uh, so that's why they removed you from the case. <laughs> that depressed guy was going to indict him on charges of attempted assassination. And in doing so, they would have twisted the truth! <laughs> I suspected it was a false charge. I heard about it from one of the guards, about Knightley. He kept desperately insisting I didn't assassinate anyone. But the courts are supposed to bring the truth to light. I may not be well versed in law, but I can say one thing for certain. Some of the prisoners here were convicted on false charges. Oh, absolutely. Ugh. That's the reality of it. Right, Anubis. Right, boy. Leaving the truth in the care of the court can be dangerous. Yeah. Honestly, that's part of why I'm like, law's cool. Don't think I could be a lawyer, nope. though. Nope. <laughs> Leaving the truth in the care of the courts is dangerous. Huh. There was someone who said the exact same thing before. That investigator from Interpol who doesn't trust prosecutors. You're not twisting the truth behind those closed courtroom doors too, are you? Fueled by those ideas, is it any wonder that courts produce nothing but falsities and lies? Rest assured, the next time we meet, I won't be so forgiving. I doubt his distrust has cleared up completely. <laughs> you feel the same way, don't you, Anubis? The truth of the courts and Mr. Edgeworth's reasoning both can't be trusted, right? Ugh. It is nothing to be upset about. You're not the only one who suspects me. Yesterday, the other prosecutor and that judge came here too. They brought the warden along. How they despise me. Oh, it must have been those two rude people from before. Prosecutor DeBest and Judge Courtney. They thoroughly inspected my room, but left without finding a thing. <laughs> it seems they were searching for the murder weapon. Tis a shame. Except the murder weapon might just be teeth. <laughs> they searched the other prisoner's cells, too. Not just mine. Cannibalistic canine. Yet, they were not unable they were still unable to find anything. All that hard work was for naught. <laughs> Prison investigation notes jotted down. Hehehe, <laughs> this is quite a problem. What should we do? Salt's testimony alone won't hold up. In order to confront him, we'll need evidence. Now, if my guests would be so kind as to leave. Right, Anubis. Show them the way. Ah, does that mean what I think it means? Ooh, let's get going, Mr. Edgeworth! He doesn't hate Mr. Edgeworth. We shall meet again, Dogen. It would be a shame for our long-awaited reunion to end so soon. Maybe his dad I'll be wait. waiting. <laughs> Maybe his dad was the one who, like, versed him, and then little Edgeworth was like, Oh boy! All right, that's definitely all the time we have for today, though. Yeah. This was a long one. We're going to split into two pieces. So, thanks for watching, everyone. Tune in next mm -hmm. time. Oh, man, Dogen's voice is the one that's going to kill me. <laughs> yeah, that's the one that's going to kill you. Every time you have a low voice that sounds like it's smoking I a little bit. I am Emperor Palpatine. I am randomly still alive in episode so nine, 9 with no explanation. explanation. <laughs> Anyhow. It's fine, because by the time this comes out, it'll be like 2023. 20, yeah. Anyways, until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.